Right, well, welcome guys to the Slowpoke Well, and here we've got a deck for you today, which I originally thought wasn't very good, but now I think it's really good. Let's have a look. So yeah, like I said in the intro, we've got Phalanx. Phalanx? 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 I don't know. Um, whatever he is, little geezer, look at him. They're all pretty cute, isn't they? <laughs> uh, so this is our build around. Okay, we've got Phalanx here, uh, 90 HP. Um, the top attack call for Phalanx is actually really nice, okay? Search your deck for two basic Pokemon and put them onto your bench. And you might think, okay, that's not a bad attack, Shay. Why are we building around it? Look at the second attack. Team attack 30 times for each one of your bench Pokemon that has Phalanx in its name, okay? So if you have a full bench, you do 3, 6, 9, 12, 150 for a DCE or Twin Energy now, I guess, um, which isn't bad on a non-GX for one attachment. So here is the Phalanx V. I'm probably going to trade for some Full Arts now because I actually quite like this deck. I can see myself playing this deck quite a lot. Um, yeah, so what the Phalanx V does. Now, I wish there was a bit more synergy between these cards, okay, because that ability, um, all your Pokemon have Phalanx and take 20 less damage from attacks. I mean, that's nice. But um, I guess if you have all four out, that means you're taking, what, 80 less? And that gives your four Lynx's non-GX about 180 effective health. But because um, you've only got 90 HP on the little geezer, like, that ability doesn't really come up much. Uh, what it does come up, though, it stops your opponent's just bosses ordering them and just easily taking them out. I say easy, he's only got 160 HP himself, so that has come up before. Um, his attack, though, Giga Impact, is quite decent. Uh, three for 210, no drawback apart from you can't attack next turn. That's not bad. Sometimes if you have to just clear the way of like a Zacian or something, if you've got a Zojo in play, you can just <coughs> get him out of the way. But uh, yeah, there's Phalanx V. Don't read really it too much. It's only there to help satisfy the bench conditions for Phalanx. We play one Dancy just because it's an extra 20 HP. It's almost like having another uh, Phalanx, only 10 or less, because obviously they will fight and type so it powers them up. Right, so that's our engine. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. I feel as if this deck can go a few different ways. Um, this list sort of tries to do a bit of everything, <laughs> but uh, we'll have a look. So, we're going to start off our engine um, with, let's go with Sonya first, okay? Sonya is a, is a card that probably isn't going to get seen in a lot of decks, but it gets really good use here. Uh, search your deck for up to two basic Pokemon or two basic energy, put them into your hand. So, like, turn one, you can, like, really get a few four links down. And mid to late game as well, you can, like, rod in some four links that have been KO'd and just Sonya them back out. So, that's quite nice. Uh, we play four Marnie. Just because what I try and do with this deck is we try to disrupt and two shot. Okay, disrupt, two shot, disrupt, two shot. Uh, and mine is our main way of uh, disrupting because we're going to give them a lower hand size. If they keep Intrepid Sword in or whatever, um, you can just put them down to a lower hand size. Maybe combine with a stamp, maybe, I don't know, something like that as well. Um, so yeah, there's your Marnies. We play two Bead. Now, Bead is a card, again, that doesn't really see a lot of play. You see it in potentially in some Obstacoon decks now. Um, but I think it does work quite well in here. Because what Bead lets you do, uh, provided you've got like an Air Balloon as a chat to any of your Pokemon, okay? If you haven't found 20 Energy, because you only play four, what Bead lets you do is promote the uh, Air Balloon uh, Pokemon. You can then attach any energy you like, apart from Twin, obviously. And then you can bead on the next fighting energy to help you fulfill your team attack. Um, and then with Count Again as well, you can actually get the four links attack going in one turn, which is kind of cool. So yeah, bead's quite nice. Now, this is an avenue where I think the deck could maybe lean more into that bead um, and sort of go heavier bead, count heavy basic energy route, which I wouldn't hurt you for. But like I said, this list is trying to just sort of do all, everything at the same time. But the bead is there and you do see it get used as well. Two bosses orders, because we are two shot down. I wouldn't mind that being a few more, to be honest. But uh, if you really want to go nut, uh, nuts bonzo, you could like <laughs> put Pokemon catches in, I guess. But for now, we're set on two bosses orders. And then one Cynthia. Outside of that, we've got four acro bikes, just to help us draw through. Because, you know, early turns, we need to be hitting twin engines. We need to be hitting our phalanxes as well. Uh, we play one great catcher to help, help close out Dene, because we Dene is weak to us, which is kind of nice as well. Uh, two ordinary rods because you know these are gonna get knocked out. They're only like 90 HP, so um, they are gonna get knocked out quite a lot. Ordinary rod lets us put them all back in deck nicely, and lets us put energy back in deck to satisfy bead. Four quick ball because I mean we're an all basic deck. Like if we could play eight <laughs> eight quick balls, I would. Not gonna lie. Uh, we play one stamp again because we're gonna try and just a late game, try and combine um, a late game KO plus a stamp, see if they can draw out of it. We play one switch. One tool scrapper, 
three dojos because this is actually a deck where we can actually use dojo because you know we're, we use basic energy um, and then if we feel behind that 40 swing can catch some people off, off guard especially if you don't know you're playing you can just bench it well bench it put it into play take a big swing because they're going to try and calculate their mass they're going to say okay he can only hit 150 this turn no matter what or they check your discard pass it oh, i can only hit well, no, 130 third year lets you just cheat that which is kind of cool uh, like we've gone through the supporters free air balloon just help develop that pivot because we can't really want to use stuff like jirachi or anything in here because um obviously it takes up a bench spot that can never be there and be a four links so we play an air balloon to just use one of our gx's or dancy as a pivot for capture energy and this is the deck where capture energy is really nice your ideal turn going second right is to attach capture energy to one of these guys and then do call for family and then you finish your turn with like four four links in play it's nuts and if they don't care for whatever reason you just attach one more go for the big hefty team attack so cat range is super good especially with stuff like counter gain as well you can do team play uh for like one energy less which is always for cat gain actually really clutch in this deck guys because it lets you do a team attack for one which is cool um, and then if you attach it to here, you can just be the attack and then do Giga Impact to just do some surprise turns. Four Twin Energy, obviously, because, you know, it lets you go in in one hit, no, uh, lets you attack in one turn, no drawback. And then five Basic Energy, so round out the list. It's super fun, guys. It reminds me a lot of Persimmon. It's just so fun. I didn't think it'd be good, but, um, yeah, we're going to roll into the games now. First game. We beat a Zacian Luke Metal. Um, he did concede, but the reason why I've left this game in is because we reach into our bag and we do a lot of fun stuff in that game. Um, and then the next game, we smash uh, Turbo Lapras. So, yeah, let's get into the games. Right then, so we actually hop in now to our games with Phalanx. Um, I have to post con because I wasn't coming live at this moment in time. So, looks like we have a little mulligan and we lead double four links, no energy. Um, so yeah, let's see what uh, see what goes on. Not a bad start in hand. Coin Blue's going first or second, to be honest. <laughs> Should have been watching the Coin Blue. All right, so he's going first and he leads Snom. Um, well, absolutely active and the Snom on the bench. We're probably playing some sort of Frostmoth deck. Um, I guess at face value, Malo is kind of popular on the ladder. It could be Lapras as well. Quick Ball gets rid of a catcher. And then brings out a Lapras. I think Lapras is probably the best thing we wanted to see because, you know, Lapras is something that we could potentially two shot provided things go our way. Gets rid of two catchers there because the yeah, Acrobite has got rid of catcher. So that's two catchers gone and an energy retrieval for him in C. You know, so he's actually getting rid of quite a few good resources here for us. So let's have a look. <clears throat> so it looks like we're going to miss the uh, turn one uh, team attack, but we can still go for Call for Family, which is always nice. We'll take the boss's order so it doesn't look like. Um, a uh, great catcher being used here. So yeah, that's why we want a Sonya, which I think is fine. I think I'm trying to work out, oh, if we can potentially Marnie. Okay, mine him, grab the energy. And that's actually what I'm going to do. And then we get capture energy as well, which is super nice. We can get loads of four links out this turn. We can get three four links out there. And I think we went for the Marnie just because I thought it's easier for us to hit a Marnie, uh, energy off the Marnie and potentially screw him up as well. Obviously, the big scary thing is there is if we miss energy, then we're in trouble. But we took that risk, and hopefully we uh, lock him up for a little bit. I'm looking at that artwork. Look how cool that artwork is, man. Look at Four Links, man. That could actually be my favorite artwork uh, from Rebel Clash so far. I love that artwork. That's why I uh, messed about and put myself in the thumbnail. So, looks like he just attaches and switches, so not a great deal. So, we're going to take a prize this turn. Our hand actually ain't too great, though. Like, we do get a max-powered um, team attack off, but that's about it. We get switch out the prizes. But, I mean, all we realistically need is twin energy for us to attack next turn. So, yeah, let's look at what he does. So, he promotes the Lapras, attaches energy. You can see my cursor going, man, because he's taking so long. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Plays a catcher, gets a heads into the four lengths V. Okay, I mean, we have got the switch there, so that's actually not too bad for us. And he fails the ocean loop because he hasn't got energy in hand, so he can't switch. So we just get the switch. Um, I guess we should probably hold to energy there. But I guess what I'm trying to do is potentially build towards the four lengths V attack. Um, that obviously takes a minimum of two turns. Um, if you have bead, you can do it a bit faster, but you know. So it looks like he goes for the Ocean Loop, which does what? Uh, 190 because of a uh, 4 lengths fear ability and puts 2 energies back to hand. So hopefully we can take a KO this turn. I believe we can. Um, 
Play the ordinary rod, get back one energy, one falling, so that seems fine. We hold count in the game. We could probably attach twin energy if we wanted to. We attach fight into Phalanx V, that seems sensible. Um, or not, I think I'm looking at the attack. 2 is a good number. But it looks like I'm settling for the um, attaching an energy to the bench, uh, benched four links with a counter game. And then out of our prizes, I mean, we're getting good stuff, but nothing sort of well beaten. We're not drawing cards. Then he marnies us. So <laughs> looks like I'm wearing around my hand. Uh, what do we get? Capture energy, research, and so that's, that's, that's what we're talking about here. So let's have a look at what I do here capture energy there so we can attack next turn that seems fine and then team attack right back at it has a pretty quick turn there but what i'm just trying to do is build up that benched four lengths with the counter gain um just so we can attack because it doesn't look like we're going to be going to bind on prize anytime soon and then without the twin energy i think just guaranteeing an attack there is nice our opponent finally does get a frost moth out though um so it's like he might be able to start attacking attack attacking with that laprus there's a retrieval does he have the VMAX though? That's the question. Um, yes, like I said, he's paid a few resources. I don't think he's used um, Evo Incense or anything. There's another Marnie, so he's seen f uh, five new cards. What do we get? Boss's Orders, Marnie, Dojo, Research. That's actually not too bad. Boss's Orders is nice, so we can potentially try and two hit that Lapras if it decides to hit the active. So, yeah, because obviously we do two shot that. In fact, we actually three shot the um, Lapras V Max, which is a bit scary. I think with Dojo, that pushes it back into a two shot range. But the pass, which is very good for us. So we're just getting all manner of attackers ready now. Yeah, I think Twin Engine is fine. It doesn't like we want to play anything else. We could research this hand away, but I like holding the boss as well. So obviously, we go down to one prize now. He's going to try and, um, you know leave the big fat Lapras in the active uh, and we don't want to do that you know we could just dissect a prize take a take the snom take the oranguru take the absol but he minds out of that hand anyways that's four minus he's played now i think and this hand isn't very good I and mean, we have back-to-back -back attackers which is nice but you know what i'm getting scared of now if we can start trying to kill the phalanx v's that's what i'm playing up like, three minus he's played so far uh doesn't have the v max though so just the ocean loop, two energies back to hand, which is kind of nice for us because that means he actually might be able to attack next turn with that lap for us. We just go into our four links with two energy attached, that seems fine. Uh, so we got one four links in the bin. Trying to work out if it's worth playing that rod or not, I think. It would be nice to potentially get some bead value there to try and bead um, energy onto the four links V, but obviously you can't do that. So it looks like we're going for the Sonya for yep, two four links. Yep, that seems fine. That's what something is really nice for, you know, mid to late game. If they try and do what they're doing to you now, leave you with a low hand size, you can just refill your hand, get back up to that 140, which is a nice, crisp, clean two shot, provided that Lapras doesn't evolve. <laughs> so, back to our opponent. He ordinary rods. Is he going to shuffle in? Probably what? I don't even know what he got. Lapras V and a Frost Moth, and then two energy as well. I assume, because he's taking his, taking his time, maybe he's trying to work out whether to do that or not. Maybe he's trying to lean more into energy retrievals that he has on the list. I don't know. To be honest. Or no, it's taking a long time. This is on like, what, 1.5 speed? And he still took a long time there. But while I was recording, I was just dancing away to my music anyway. So, <laughs> yeah, he's got rid of quite a few resources, which is nice for us. There's a research, though. Getting rid of free energy. Yikes, okay. He's got three in the bin. There's the, there's the backup Frost Moth. There's the VMAX to the active. And there is the energy. So, he's actually taking a KO this turn with GMAX Pump. That's quite scary. Um, and now I'm in a bit of a scary spot here because once this baby Phalanx goes down with Twin Energy, we ain't doing a great deal. But we top deck Capture Energy, which is okay. Let's just grab out another Four Links V, which is fine. But, you know, we're still not exactly sailing away. How much damage we've we now? 140. So we have to just hit that lap for us one more time. So we just need one more energy off the top. Provided Lapras stays in the act. Well, but actually, if he retreats into anything else, we can just KO it. So we just need one energy and a pretty nice driving spot here. We've still got quite a few supporters left in deck as well. I mean, we've got Bead in our hand now. That's the one support we've got that we don't actually want right now. Um, I guess Boss Lords wouldn't be too great either. So he's in a bit of a pick here. He needs to like bench another attacker, um, attach to it, and get it in the active. I mean, he can just pay retreat with his Lapras, that's fine. But it needs to be a big, hefty attacker really let's see what he goes for power cube would be kind of cool um another lap for his v potentially has the primate wisdom looks like he's digging for something he's got 15 cards left in deck so he obviously can't he just switches okay 
there's the Marnie. So that's four Marnie he's plays. Wow, okay. Uh, we get energy and boss as well off that Marnie, though. So that pretty much seals it up for us, which is nice. Lucky like dance, ice dancing. Just in the cards, I guess, because he doesn't actually need these energies here. Maybe he's just going to try and ride out this Lapras and say, right, you know, if you can hit me, that's fine. But I'm just going to care of everything now, including the V. Maybe that's, maybe that's what his game plan is to just try and boss his orders a four lengths V, which seems fine. But there you go, there to concede, we actually, um, we had KO there, which was kind of cool. We could just um, hit the active again, we had the energy. I think you might have conceded a bit too early there, but you know. Right, let's get on to the next game though. We're playing against uh, Luke Metalization, I believe. Uh, yep, yeah, Luke Metalization, I believe we're playing against here. Uh, looks like we've mulliganed. I think, I didn't actually know what he was playing. Well, going in because I was too busy dancing, I didn't see. But um, at the time, so we could have got the air balloon. Tempted to lead the four links just in case shenanigans happen. We don't want him to donk our four links. Developing air balloon pivot now is quite nice. So yeah, that's like he benches. <laughs> that's like he benched the, <laughs> the more wall. That's for the one match where I don't think more wall value actually matters because he'd be doing us a favor if he benches stuff for us right so there's the um air balloon tool scrapper get rid of that frying pan which is kind of nice because that frying pan might push it out of two shot range uh sonya's kind of cool again we can get full value from the sonya get a double four links um, babies because i don't think the four links v's for most part is actually like really worth it um because we never want to attack with it in this matchup because, you know, I don't know if this was an ADP variant at this moment in time. Crushing Hammer, Tails, thank God. I mean, we do have a backup to energy as well. But, um, yeah, there's the research. So, we really attaches, researches, gets with a tag call. Puts down Lola Meowth. This isn't really, doesn't really matter much because, you know, he can one-shot everything anyway. It's like he's trying to potentially get a KO here by switching, attaching, or metal sorcery and come back into active. But he doesn't do that, so he's potentially going to give up the more well. Amazing top deck there, so we uh, get the twin energy down onto the bench for a link and then research. So we're trying to work out what to quick ball away. I think even manual energy is probably the correct call. Kind of want all of these cards, they're all kind of nice, like, in their own way. Get rid of a Marnie. Which seems fine. It looks like we've prized that baby four links. Which is kind of annoying so i don't really want to put these four lengths v's down because they have a two retreat cost and he one shots them and he takes two prizes at a time um yeah so let's have a look so we hit for a 120 into that uh more while which is kind of nice good good numbers he evolves the alone in Perserka. good area in Perserka, sorry comes back in with the uh zation on a research and he benches a luke metal and that part i was like jesus christ okay kind of scared because that could push us into three shot range we three shot that anyway but the GX attack with moving energy is kind of annoying. Speaking of annoying, there's a crushing hammer head. So it actually takes away two energy this turn, which is super annoying. But luckily for us, because we have got uh, balloon developed, we can just go bead count again, as you just saw there. <laughs> um, yeah, which is nice. So that's why the count again is so nice, guys, because they start, start creeping ahead. Oh, we didn't even play the bead, so we've got the count again already developed, which is nice. So we get the Cynthia, we get the Dojo. And I think, does Dojo push it into a KO here? I'm not sure. Let's have a look. Yeah, it does. So, wow. So, the Dojo pushes it into KO range. And now he's in a bit of a position. Because uh, he can GX now, right? Which is fine. But he only takes away one energy. Um, which is kind of nice for us. Obviously, Kagan isn't live now. But we do have bead developed. Um, and a capture energy. So, now the turn we go for bead. So we promote the uh, four links V, he just KOs us with uh, his 150 attack. So we just bench four links, we can attach capture and just get another four links out of the deck. And then um, bead as well, so that's kind of cool really. So we're getting a max powered uh, team impact here, I think I'm just trying to work out with the four links V down, but obviously we do. I'm trying to work out yet, so we bead now to that, and then we acro bike. Not really the greatest though, not really the greatest. What I'm kind of worried about now is if he GXs, now he takes off two energy um, and we're sort of scrambling. So there's a team attack, no 160, which is a nice two shot though. So we're putting him in a bit of a scary position here. We actually two shot this tag team with this little bit before Link, which is nice. Um, 
So not, and he hasn't got any of any other energy developed. I think he's played like two or three metal sources as well. Obviously, if he has his loop metal go down, we're down to one prize, and we can just you know Guzma something or Boss Order. So, so um, that Oran Gurugs is weak to fight in. Or the Morwile as well. Thinking about it, that's our prize mapping right there. So, yeah, he's in a bit of a scary position because you know. If he does GX, then we can potentially, you know, dilly dabble and get another KO. Uh, that would be kind of nice. But there's a concede, so yeah. The reason I left that game in is because I knew we'd do some triff, some nice tricks in that one, which is kind of nice. So yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Four Links is actually a really fun little deck. I highly recommend you give it a go. Probably doesn't navigate Dragapult very well. I mean, you get mints, but uh, everything else you can, give a, you can give a fun game to. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Hey guys, thanks for watching that video, much appreciated, really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please don't hesitate to subscribe, I try and power as much stuff here as I can. Full deck profiles, plus games, topic conversational pieces regarding anything in the TCG. Um, check out my Twitter, check out my Facebook, that's where you get most of the updates, sort of see what's going on behind the scenes, all that good stuff. Also check out the SoundCloud for the full um, bi-weekly podcast. If you're interested, if you like the conversational pieces, go check that out. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a good day.